Welcome to Vlogmas number nine. It is 6.35 in the morning. <laughs> I got like no sleep last night. And then Preston had to be at work at 6.30 today. So I went to the gym at five. And I basically just pretended to be at the gym. Like if anybody saw me at the gym today, they saw me literally just like laying on the mats pretending to do abs. Like that was it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start the day off watching How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey version, the best version. Watch that and then either take Parker to the park later. Oh, he's all perked up. Like drive him to um, one of the bigger parks or go play tennis or something later. But the thing we cut out for Luna, the little salamander thing, um, so we want to do like it's an elf on the shelf for Luna. So it's a salamander or it could be a gecko or it could be a lizard or it could be a reptile. So like we need to make something that rhymes to make it like an elf on the shelf. So like a lizard in a blizzard or something. Not that. That's dumb. Mine was um, salamander over yander. <laughs> Um, I don't know if anybody has a better idea that we can name Luna's little gecko thing. She was interested in it for like five minutes and then it's, she's done. She's over it. But Preston was like moving it all over the, the house. So it's in a different spot now. So I thought it was kind of funny. Anyways, I hope everybody else is getting to sleep in and doesn't have to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. The 4.30 in the morning isn't bad. It's just I also didn't get any sleep because I was asleep for like, or I was awake for like two hours before that. So. Okay, we'll see what we get into later. I just finished watching The Grinch. Such a good movie, so funny. My favorite part is when he's like, you didn't tell me about the holiday cheer chair. You didn't tell me about the holiday cheer chair. That whole part where he's like the, he's the guest of honor for the celebration is just so freaking funny. But I thought I would share my top 10 books that I read in 2022. And these are not in like from best to even better, like the best of the best. Um, this is just like, I went through what books I read from the beginning to the end of the year and then just kind of picked the top from there. So best books that I read in 2022 in no particular order. Number one is Where the Crawdads Sing. I started 2022 reading this book. I finished it on like the third. I picked it up on the first and it was so good. It reminded me of living in South Carolina and like my grad research and it was a really good book. So yeah, it's about this girl who grows up in like a wetland marsh area in North Carolina and her life and she gets accused of something in the small town and everybody like kind of sees her as the marsh girl and kind of how she navigates like her life because her family has like a lot of issues and stuff like that. I, I'm so bad at explaining books because I don't know what I shouldn't say. Like I don't know what would give it away. M number two is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. So this is um, less of like, well, it is like a novel, but it's more of like a romance fiction book. And it's about this girl and she meets this guy and he's a surgeon and I thought it was cute because Preston works in the OR he's not a surgeon but he basically is you know like close enough and it was a really good book and the ending is kind of crazy and then she made a second book or like a prequel or like from the guy's perspective one of those it was either a second book a prequel or the guy's perspective but I haven't read it yet but maybe I'll pick it up um, next year. Okay, book number three is Annihilation. So I actually saw the movie with Preston whenever it came out. Like I love Natalie Portman. Honestly, the whole lineup, the whole lineup for actresses that were in the movie was great. Um, the movie was weird. It was like, I mean, it was okay. The movie, so I watched the movie first. The book is way better than the movie, like way better than the movie. 
the movie just makes it seem like it's this fantasy thing going on, but the book really like gets into it. So it's about this group of biologists who are like going on this secret project and discover that like they were sent here for a different reason than what they were told. And it's really interesting. Number four is The Vanishing Half. So this is also like a really cool book that again, I don't know if I say what I say will give it away. Anyways, it's about two sisters who are twins. I'll say that. Um, number five is The Alchemist. So this is a classic and me and Preston actually listened to it either when we were going on our Canada trip or just when we were driving like around Montana, we did long drives to see my brothers and we would listen to The Alchemist and this was such a good book. I had never read it before. I obviously have heard of it. Um, there's actually a Macklemore song that says like read The Alchemist or like Something like that. I forget the lyrics. That is kind of the reason why me and Preston wanted to read it is because it's like, it's a classic. It's like a good classic novel about adventure and like purpose and like that's, yeah. So we read that and it was so good. Like the beginning, it just kind of takes me a while with the book sometimes. And like, I feel like the beginning part, I was very confused because it's very set up and like old timey. He's going on a quest and all this stuff. So there are some parts that are really funny and some good quotes out of it too. <laughs> the next one, number six, is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This book, I kind of read it like halfway of the year and this book got me really excited to be reading again. I think the first half of the year, I read like five or six books like between January and April and then I kind of took a break and then I read this in June or July and it kind of just kickstarted it back up for me that like it was a really good novel like very well written also kind of like a romance novel but it's just kind of like it's about a celebrity and she for the first time in her career like she's older now she's telling the story of her life she's been a very private person and now she's doing like a tell-all with this reporter and the reporter like doesn't know why she was picked and all this stuff anyways it's really good um so i would definitely recommend that i haven't been saying the authors i haven't been saying who wrote the books anyways that one was written by Taylor Jenkins read. All right, number seven, Lessons in Chemistry. This, this might be my number one book of the year. Lessons in Chemistry is about this woman scientist. She like is going throughout her career and everything. And it's just about her life. And like, then she has, she like meets a dude and I like, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm so bad at this. It's about a scientist who happens to be a woman and she is working, she's a very smart chemist um, working for this research group and she like falls in love with somebody else in the group and they like get together and just like a series of weird events happen to where like things happen to where they don't believe her work and all this other stuff. Anyways, a bunch of like sexist, things are happening in this work environment and one thing leads to another and she ends up like doing a total career change and it's really cool like the way she kind of transitions into that anyways i don't want to spoil anything but that was by bonnie Gar garmus okay number eight is i'm glad my mom died by jeanette mccurdy so this was her memoir or like a non-fiction book and I would suggest listening to this on audio because she's just so funny. Like that's kind of like messed up to say, but the whole book isn't about like her mom necessarily. Like it, it talks about like her upbringing, of course, like how her mom like helped her get her career going and all this stuff. And then like a bunch of like body image and like abuse and eating and disordered eating and stuff like that. 
but there's so many times in the book that she's just funny she's just like a funny person like she can't help but be funny like even these really difficult conversations about like her mom had cancer and like you know she passed away from that and everything it's just really funny like she throws the jokes in there and i'm like dude that's that's what i'm here for i'm here for the jokes and it was really good so number nine i really liked you sound like a white girl and this is also nonfiction, but she's from san antonio or she's from texas and growing up she talks about like being mexican-american like what that means to her and like how she lives in like you know the the light of everything that's going on in our, our country like the past 20 years so it's a really good book um i will say that one i had to like pause at times because it would just get me so heated i'm like so passionate like yeah i just like there were times where i was like okay we need to take a step back i need to like not think about this for a second talks about like immigration and a bunch of different stuff um, refugees asylum and again just being a mexican-american person and the struggles that that entails and why those str struggles should not exist it was a good book and then my last book is once there were wolves by charlotte mcconaughey this was our first book club book if you didn't know i have like i host a book club if you want to join just let me know and i will get you the link to the slack channel that we use first book club book and I really liked it. It was very drama filled and like a hint of conservation work in there. It's a scientist who moves to Scotland to reintroduce wolves into this community and like the pressures from the public and the pushback that she gets and along the way she like meets people and like has friends and gets to be more than friends with some people. And it's really good. And she also has a sister. Um, and it kind of has themes of like, um, like sexual abuse um, and like weird parenting, like your parents not being there, like fully there and stuff like that. Her parents are kind of a big part of that story for her too. So those are my top 10 book recommendations from 2022, from the books that I read in 2022. But every year, I always come back to this one book and I should buy it. I should buy like a physical copy. I thought I had a physical copy, but I don't, I don't know where it is now. In 2020, I read Educated by Tara Westover. And to this day, every time somebody asks me for a book recommendation, that is my book recommendation because it is the best book I've ever read. It's a story about her life and how... Like she grew up in Idaho in this very anti-government family who like didn't believe in social security cards and birth certificates and all this stuff and like didn't necessarily believe in like public education and she goes on to live this like in, in her family's eyes like a very unconventional life and it's it's really interesting to see like how she gets out of that situation and obviously it's based on her real life so it's very interesting. And then recently I've picked up some books that I will be reading in 2023. And my goal for 2022 was 24 books, so two a month. And I need one more book to hit that goal. <laughs> and I'm in the middle of reading a book. It's called Brown Girls. Um, it's more of like short stories in, an, in like a poetry form. It's really interesting. So I'm gonna finish that one up hopefully this week. I'll have hit my goal. So one more book. For the next two weeks i got that i'm gonna finish it this week hopefully but some of the books that i got to start reading um for next year are the thursday murder club so this was recommended to me by one of my um, supervisors she also has a book club and this was one that they read and she really enjoyed it and recommended it and i don't know i'm kind of on a mystery novel kick right now so we'll just keep going with it um sounds really interesting it's about like a retirement home and or like people at a retirement home or building or something like that and they witness a tragic incident and then they do an investigation kind of reminds me of only murders in the building at least from what i read about it and like what people have told me about it that's the vibe it's giving um next book is set boundaries find peace i've been meaning to get this for like over a year now and i got my hands on it 
it's more of like a guided reading of like steps you can take to create boundaries and it goes through like how to create boundaries with children and how to create boundaries with family members or in the workplace and yeah i definitely struggle with this so hopefully i can learn something from this book last year preston got me nine perfect strangers i think i'm pretty sure he got this for me for my birthday or something and i actually started it i just never finished it and i started the tv show and i never finished that either but i want to read the book because i heard the book was really good so that's this and it's about these obviously nine strangers who go on a retreat they like go to this eye-opening awakening uh, mind spirit body retreat to kind of rejuvenate from their dull lives something like that so got that oh at a thrift store in bozeman i actually picked up this book eat pray love i love the movie so i thought i i might like the book um so i got it and i want to read it um but yeah eat pray love is about again kind of like a spiritual awakening thing this lady at least from the movie um like this corporate worker or something she kind of goes through a life life-changing event and then she like goes on this retreat in india and meets the shaman and blah 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 so eat pray love this book i also want to read um uh, my sister-in-law gave this to me lentil underground renegade farmers and the future of food in america and one of my friends actually has read this and said it was really good and then i also want to read eager beavers matter the surprising secret life of beavers and why they matter and it's actually signed this is a signed copy um my supervisor tracy got me this book yeah it's signed he lives in washington um so yeah it's a book about beavers and again goes with the biology conservation theme so those are books that i will be reading in 2023 somebody please hold me accountable this is so many books so many books i can't get any more books until i finish this 